This is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss. I'm in the lobby of the Wellington Town Hall. Inside, the Vector Wellington Orchestra is rehearsing a piece by this month's YouTube Composer of the Month, John Sathis. Stronger. Yeah. And I have to say that 144 and 145 just doesn't feel comfortable. The 5 8 bars. There's a certain edgy, breathless atmosphere here today as Pedro Carnero. One of the world's premier solo percussionists puts the finishing touches on John's marimba concerto, Gin. It's characteristic of John's style, with intricately interlocking rhythms, imaginative use of modalities, and a driving energetic pulse. And yet it's anything but mechanical. John's scoring is generous and intelligent, and each supporting player in the orchestra has a part that is not only playable, but gripping. It's music like this that has given John international credibility, and commissions from world-class virtuosos like percussion superstar Evelyn Glennie. Like most working composers nowadays, John's got a website that's an important professional resource with the standard bio, discography, survey of professional activities and coming events. But a bit more savvy than the standard composer website, there are also links to social networking, as well as to his label, Rattle Records, and to his publishers, Promethean Editions, but that's just the who, the when, and the why of John Sathis. For the what, you really have to see his YouTube site, which is a proverbial embarrassment of riches. Over the course of almost a hundred videos, these uploads chart the career of an imaginative and unique musical voice, from recent premieres that show him at the prime of his career, stretching all the way back to this video we're listening to now, Mater's Dance, in which the composer, still in his 20s here, recorded his own take on the piece that would soon become one of Glennie's standard showstoppers. Let's take a closer look at one of John's best-known works, View from Olympus, a concerto for solo percussionist, piano, and orchestra, commissioned by Evelyn Glennie and premiered by her in Manchester, England in 2002. The score calls for an awesome array of percussion instruments, running the gamut from mallet instruments through to assorted drums, cymbals, and metallophones, all the way to ethnic instruments like the hammer dulcimer and steel drums. And that's just for the soloist. The orchestral percussion section of two to four players plays many of these same instruments, plus any other members of the kitchen sink that the soloist doesn't have. The first movement, titled The Furies, bears many of those trademark touches we've just heard, Listen to the way that John sets up the cadenza here, how the complex, chattering soloists are doubled and punctuated tensely by octaves in the winds, and how the brass and strings set up cross rhythms that tighten the tension inexorably toward the resolution that kicks off the soloists. If you've detected some traces of Frank Zappa here, and a bebop approach to the thematic structure beneath all of those complex chordal melodies, then you're not wrong. John has acknowledged the influence of Zappa, particularly in collaboration with such drummers as Terry Bozio and Chad Wackerman, and John worked his way through university as a jazz pianist. Both approaches are used to full effect in drum dances, another piece of core repertoire for Glenny, or even more so in the sax concerto Omniphenix which features not only a kit drum part, but a largely improvised part for tenor sax.
Having an improvised solo part means that different soloists will be creating quite different outcomes in interpreting the concerto. We just heard an excerpt of the late, great Michael Brecker's Year 2000 premiere in Italy. Now let's listen to Joshua Redman's take on the same passage. As exciting as this punchy, spiky side that John's writing is, there are other moods in which he excels. Check out the poetic second movement to view from Olympus, the contemplative waiting for the airplane, or this piece, the string quartet Abhisheka. It has an eerie, unearthly quality to its slow slides of pitch and its lonely, distant solos. I've heard many trivial, off-key sounding contemporary pieces using quarter tone notation. John's piece is one of the few that truly makes use of this convention in an original, unforgettable way. It signifies the beginning of a growing focus on my heritage, which, you know, my parents are Greek. And they were immigrants that came here in the 60s. They've gone back, been back for 12, 13 years. And I go there very, very regularly. For me, there's always been a kind of tension between the, the culture here and the Greek culture. Emotionally and expressively very different things altogether. All over the world, because of the high degree of immigration that's gone on in the last 50 years, there are people like myself all over the place who grow up in one culture externally, and yet internally the growth is quite different. All the pieces I've been writing have followed, I suppose, what you'd call Greek musical influence. And it started with this string quartet. Actually, even if you've never heard the name John Sathis before, you've probably heard his music. Anyone who watched the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2004 Athens Olympics, a fair proportion of the world's population, would have heard John's original fanfares, arrangements of iconic Greek songs, and this stirring choral fireworks music. It's truly epic orchestral scoring, put to use not in the service of some fantasy movie soundtrack, but in a real worldwide celebration of humanity's unending struggle for perfection. All the training, craft, and imagination of one composer come together in one brief moment to channel the hopes and dreams of mankind. So that's this month's YouTube Composer of the Month for April 2010. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Next month's YouTube Composer of the Month is going to be a really great Italian composer uh, having his works premiered in Mexico City. 